Um, on behalf of the, uh, the Medical Advisory Board for the uh, Leukemia Research Foundation, we'd like to thank all of you for coming today and uh, sharing your interest, your expertise, and your enthusiasm for raising funds for our junior investigators. Uh, I've been uh, the chair of this program for, I think, the last five or six years, and it's been a tradition to uh, to fund uh, grantees all over the world. We pick the best uh, uh, grants, and uh, it's actually a little bit unusual, believe it or not, to select people from Chicago as grant uh, recipients. Last year, I don't believe there was one. Uh, this year, there, have, there are two. One's from my institution, Stephanie Berg, who is joining us today. from uh, University of Illinois in Chicago here. But I'm just saying, just because I was involved in the process doesn't mean that uh, I, I had uh, uh, there was one, one other grant uh, 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 from uh, somebody in Chicago who did not get funded, and hopefully maybe next year that will happen. Um, and uh, it, it is a daunting task. Every year we get between uh, 70 and 80 initial proposals, and we winnow that down to approximately 40 by doing a two-step process where we uh, ask for a two-page description of the grant and then uh, uh, pick the best of those, about half of those, for formal grant uh, presentations. Uh, the grants then are submitted at that point in time, and we have now approximately 30 advisors, 30 physicians, 30 PhDs, including some here in the room who've been doing it for many years. Uh, for my institution, Nancy uh, Zosnick Lee and Mike Nishimura, among uh, many others, uh, who have uh, provided their expertise in, in reviewing these grants. Um, and uh, we picked the, the best, and the best, as you can see in your brochure, have gone on, many of these have gone on to have very productive careers, uh, funded NIH uh, um, level research, and have uh, produced uh, striking uh, findings in the field of leukemia and lymphoma, all because of your hard work, your golf outings, your, your fundraisers that you uh, have downtown, etc. These all really make the difference. We give that money to research. We don't give that money to universities. We give that money to researchers. The universities don't get the money. They don't get to spend it on uh, uh, salaries. They get to spend it specifically on the research. It goes to where it does the most good for what you all want it to go for, and that's something that uh, uh, is very gratifying. A few years ago, one of the major organizations in oncology in this country asked to take it over, believe it or not, because how successful we were, and they wanted uh, to, I think, uh, bask in the glow of the uh, Leukemia Research Foundation. Uh, but with the continued support of the physicians and the PhDs uh, 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 that we have in, uh, in this country who are supportive of this process, we decided that we would keep it. Uh, and, and again, uh, I'd like to personally, in behalf of all the grantees, as well as the grant reviewers, uh, Thank you kindly for your great work. As you can see, there are, there are 30 reviewers this year. If you think uh, herd cats is hard, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a pretty daunting task to get everybody uh, in the same room at the same time. And uh, we thank the LRF staff for accomplishing that. Now, as uh, Kevin mentioned, uh, uh, we. We can announce today um, that on Friday, we submitted the final paperwork uh, to the FDA for us to begin our clinical trial of CAR T cells uh, in, in Chicago here. Uh, they have 30 days to come back with any questions, comments, corrections, etc. Usually that process goes pretty quickly and we're fully expecting within the next uh, uh, 60 days plus or minus that we'll be ready to actually treat patients. So uh, we're, we're very close. The main reason we decided to do this actually is, is not just because we could, because we have the facilities and the expertise, is because as many of you know and have seen uh, reports, 
These can be quite toxic. Patients can have uh, prolonged hospitalizations and may end up with a treated disease that's successfully treated but end up in a rehab facility for a month or two because uh, this therapy may cause coma, seizures, uh, low blood pressure, shock, kidney failure. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. We have a therapy that can cure otherwise incurable patients, uh, but it comes at a, a significant, uh, significant toxicity. We, as well as others all across the country, are working to try to not only improve the efficacy, but decrease the toxicity. And we are coming up, our, our main modus, if you will, um, uh, that Mike Nishimura and Nash uh, Hussein, uh, who are leading this project for us uh, now, um, are uh, focused on coming up with a more purified product that we think will offer the same clinical efficacy or effectiveness, but at a reduced toxicity, uh, so that in fact we may have the same responses but less toxicity and be able to do these not only in the outpatient setting but also in patients who are a little bit older and a little bit um, uh, a little bit sicker than the pediatric patients from whom this treatment is approved for acute lymphoid leukemia. So. Uh, this is important to me, uh, getting older, um, and I think it should be important to all of us uh, in this room, uh, not only for ourselves, uh, potentially, hopefully not, but also our loved ones, friends, family, uh, acquaintances, etc. Uh, I've seen some of the very preliminary data on the acute leukemia therapy in adults. It looks very good. These are these are clinical trials that have actually just closed, and hopefully. The commercial products will be available within the next couple of years, but uh, again, uh, still fraught with some of the toxicities that I just mentioned. So we're looking forward to doing this. We've made a commitment to share our uh, resources, our uh, abilities, our opportunities with other institutions in town, and, and so far we've had communications with several academic centers who are interested in, in working with us uh, as we um, uh, modify or adjust our therapy to optimize it over the next year or so. So again, I'd like to thank uh, each and every one of you. Um, maybe I'll be a past president now. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming today and sharing your enthusiasm. Uh, what you do as a grassroots organization is amazing. Um, it is the organization that when I first came to Chicago, uh, I was drawn to. I was drawn to because of three reasons. And these three reasons, of course, are funding of research, uh, education uh, to patients and families, and financial assistance when it's most needed. Not a lot of the other major organizations offer as much or as equal uh, in the three arms of the treatments and therapies and research and education that you all support. So again, thank you very much and uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to uh, work on your behalf.